Hello and welcome to a special edition of Oncodaily's virtual interview series. I'm Martin Hart, Union Medical Oncologist, Palliative Care Specialist and Director of Oncodaily LA. As part of our dedicated coverage of the 22nd International Conference of the Society for Integrative Oncology, we are spotlighting leaders who are shaping the future of integrative cancer care. The Society for Integrative Oncology is a global leader in advancing evidence-based patient-centered cancer care that combines in conventional treatments with integrative therapies. The 22nd International Conference brought together clinicians, researchers, and educators from around the world to share new research, clinical innovations, and collaborative approaches in integrative oncology. Today, I am honored to be joined by Dr. Ting Bao. Dr. Bao is the co-director of the Zekim Center for Integrative Therapies and Healthy Living at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. She's a board-certified breast medical oncologist, medical acupuncturist, and integrative medicine physician. Her leadership within SIO includes serving as past president, immediate past co-chair of the education committee, and current co-chair of the research committee. She's led numerous clinical trials exploring how therapies like acupuncture and yoga can improve quality of life and help many symptoms for people living with cancer. Her work bridges rigorous science with compassionate care, and she's helped shape how integrative oncology is practiced across major institutions. Dr. Bao, thank you for being with us. Sure, thank you for having me. Let's start with the big picture. What made this year's SIO meeting feel different or special to you? So as one of the conference co-chairs and the local host for this year's SLL conference, it really stand out for a few reasons. Um, first, it's really um, it's more than 500 people participating, one of the largest um, participation rate. And it involves also we have lots of students and the faculty from top institution locally, Harvard, Brown, Yale, others, and uh, to explore some fascinating topics um, such as music therapy and uh, psychedelic research, etc. So I think the conference is just very exciting in many ways and has lo- novel uh, subjects and lots of young people joining us. You co-chaired the education committee. What were some key learning goals that you hoped attendees would walk away with? So basically, because our society's mission is really to advance evidence-based integrative oncology, so the top goal is to really understand the evidence-based integrative medicine approaches that can practically apply in oncology care. So that's the top goal. And then in addition, our goal is to um, really appreciate the evolving landscape of integrative oncology research and how to critically evaluate this therapies. Um, and lastly is really the goal is to um, for the participant to develop a network of colleagues committed to advancing patient-centered holistic cancer care and feel empowered to implement these approaches in their own practical setting. Integrative oncology is evolving fast. What's one area where you see the biggest growth or interest from clinicians right now? This year, I think definitely the winner is exercise oncology, uh, mainly because there's so much research about it. And the most recent challenge trial presented at ASCO, American Society of Clinical Oncology Conference, basically shows there's 7% overall survival benefit in patients who exercise when compared to those who don't. So I would say this year, exercise oncology is um, the most... uh, a compelling area in integrative oncology. Oh, thank you. You have helped shape clinical guidelines. How do you balance evidence, patient needs, and cultures, perspectives when building those? Yeah, so... Basically, um, yeah, I was part of the guideline committee, uh, not committee, but developed the pain, uh, integrated medicine for cancer-related pain uh, guidelines. So I was part of the panel uh, authors developing this. Um, and there, since then, we have a few other guidelines coming out. So developing clinical guidelines really required thoughtful, multidimensional approach that honors scientific rigor uh, while remain responsive to the 
diverse need of patients and practitioners. Um, so the foundation must always be the high quality evidence prioritizing those well-designed randomized control trial that can really reliably guide clinical practice. Um, but evidence alone is not sufficient. Um, so we also have a sort of patient-centered um, priority. Therefore, for every guideline, we always have a patient advocate, at least one, to join the guideline um, to get, join the authorship, um, the panel discussion, and to bring patients' perspective into the committee. And then in terms of culture perspective, it's the same thing. So for those um, panels, we usually invite people not just from one culture, but multiple cultures to bring their um, cultural background and diverse healing traditions into the discussion. Thank you. Acupuncture and yoga have strong data now. What's next in terms of research priorities or clinical integration? Yeah, so acupuncture and yoga has been studied quite a lot. And then there are a few other areas that we're putting in more research and it has more uh, res result coming out. Number one is this expressive art therapy. So one of the plenary session and keynote speech um, in our conference is on expressive art and cancer. So, for example, the music therapy, there has been so much data on music therapy helping patients. Um, the recent melody trial basically showed music therapy significantly reduced uh, cancer-related anxiety. So that's, you know, one area to look out for. Another is Tai Chi and Qigong. So those also has multiple research um, randomized control trial conducted and shows promising data in reducing fatigue, improve quality of life. Um, yeah, so that. And then lastly is um, uh, I'm Chinese. So I grew up in China. I, I really am fascinated by all this traditional Chinese medicine approaches, including those herbal supplements. And I think a rigorous pharmacologic study of those herbal supplements um, and cancer-related symptoms uh, will be very helpful and potentially is in the future. Yeah. Thank you. We see education is central to your work. What's one thing you wish every oncology fellow learned about integrative care? Right. So I, it's just one concept, uh, a fundamental concept. Uh, there is already substantial high quality evidence supporting integrative oncology interventions and, uh, is our professional responsibility to understand those evidence and provide uh, education to our patients and potentially offer those approach to them. Um, yeah. And then if they want to learn more, we have a textbook coming up. is Comprehensive Integrative Oncology textbook with, I think, 66 chapters um, and on evidence for different types of integrative oncology approaches. And they can start from there. Yeah. Thank you. SIA is a global community. How do you see international collaboration shaping the future of integrative oncology? Um, as international collaboration is absolutely essential to help advance integrative oncology um, because our society is a global society as well. Um, and also the, we'll benefit from the diversity of perspectives and different traditions and different clinical experience. Yeah, this year I'm happy to report about 200 international attendees attended SIO conference and really shows the global engagement in our society. Um, yeah. And then I think the result, the Integrative Oncology textbook, we have multiple, uh, many, many international authors as well. Um, that's also helpful. And then we, as I always think, we also have different chapters at different places. We have Korean SIO, European SIO, China SIO. So all this can bring in SIO to local community, local culture. Yeah. Thank you. And finally, a personal one. What keeps you inspired to do this work year after year? 
Mm, day after day, <laughs> so for me it's really our patients. Um, those uh, our patients. Yeah, I was a medical. No, I was a pre med student in college, and then I did a summer internship in the acupuncture clinic. It was really the patients there. Um, they said, you know, my oncologists don't know anything I'm doing, but the future oncologists should definitely be able to guide us and stuff. So it's always the patients. Patients tell us was the most important things for them. And then guide us on research, and yeah, and they are actually the backbone of Society for Integrative Oncology. We have a really active patient advocate group and try to you know push our field forward、um, with their interest and their、um, knowledge and their enthusiasm. Yeah.、Uh, what helps you recharge after a hard day? Oh, so <laughs> do nothing. <laughs> I think that should help me. Just、uh, keep my calendar empty for like two hours, and then just maybe take deep breaths and some meditation, and then walk in the forest if I have the ability. Yeah, or some kind of park, and then just not doing anything like planned, and just relax. That really helped me recharge. Yeah. And Doctor Bao, thank you for sharing your time and your insights with us today. To our viewers, stay tuned for more conversation from the Society for Integrative Oncology's twenty-second international conference right here on Onco Daily. Good luck and take care. Great, thank you. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onco Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.